that Gambit played so successfully in the last game. Swain is the other pick here for Rainbow Seven. So Seiya Ogeral could take that into their solo lanes. It does feel like that uh, Swain, very popular over in Latin America, yet so far on day one, Rainbow Seven yet to bring it out. Uh, same uh, for Gambit. But the priority on the Swain, remember the flexibility that you have. You can put him in both mid lane and top. Jiral has shown his flexibility on the wider range of champions that he has been able to play. And I think that it's exciting to see where they look to put that focus, whereas Gamut lock in their comfort picks. I mean, I, I was going to say, like, obviously Bronze been taken away, but I wonder how many of these picks Gambit just run back from the last game that they just came off playing so successfully. Obviously, a different opponent now, so you will have to adjust. But Anivia has been locked in already for Kira. Play this matchup. Only a few minutes ago, with Morgana being unbanned, Edward, he thought about the Thresh, definitely a, a signature pick for him, but he will go with the Morgana. So another very defensive bot lane. It's also quite strong. You have a decent amount of poke from that two versus two. Depending on what Rainbow decide to lock in with their bottom lane, they could choose to save it for later on, perhaps get priority on the jungle now if they wanted to. Things like the Trundle and Olaf are both still available, and both big comfort picks for Oddy. But instead, his eyes are looking to round out the bottom line. And you would maybe think of something, you know, like a Caitlyn. Maybe even Zaya on her own as a pick here for White Lotus. But I think, again, given the stakes in this game for both these teams, White Lotus is sticking to a pick that he knows well. So Rainbow 7 going much more towards a scaling route. Gambit have demonstrated that they too like to scale with the double tier, but in that mid game, the 20 minute mark, that is when that team really turns on. And they took one Baron and they ended the game last time, Pastry. So Rainbow Seven are gonna have to respect that or find ways of getting early leads. So far, it looks like that their early focus on the next phase of bands will be towards a couple of early playmaking junglers. So the options could be, I feel, to go for an early trundle here if they wanted to. We'll have to see, there's Kha'Zix ban. Maybe that Trundle, it's a ban out of respect for Oddy and the pick. Again, especially if they're looking to enable White Lotus here on Trist or no. We'll see yet another ban here from Gambit. They're expecting the Swain to be in the middle lane. They know that Jiral has played uh, both the Orn and the Sion. I believe we did see some Gangplank from him earlier in the day as well. It was good also. It Gangplank was, he's good. showing up pretty well as Trundle actually banned by Rainbow Seven. This implies to me that they might be looking for an, uh, an early Olaf rotation. Uh, you kind of look at what is left available to kind of stop that champion and you're kind of limited in terms of options. So if Gambit want to, they could take that away. But it feels like that, hey, we'll give you a slightly stronger jungler and then we will secure ourselves a stronger top laner blind as a result. What? They decide to go for a Karma ban. That's a solo lane Karma ban, remember. With Bro Unless Braum's going somewhere real crazy. Yeah. That's that the is... expectation from Gambit. Well, so... they did talk about lane bully Braum, remember? They did. <laughs> very, very strong. Uh, again, I think maybe just knowing that Rainbow Seven really want to put a lot of stock in White Lotus this game. Zach, though, is the pick here for Oddi. Going to take a tank jungle into this one. So maybe leaving the aggressive all after Diamond, or maybe Gambit have something else in mind. It does feel like Gambit now have quite a few options going up against the uh, Zach, because remember, he does get himself very low in the early jungle. And you've just got a lot of scaling and team fighting right now for Rainbow Seven. Gambit, I like the pickup of the Ola. It gives you a little bit of early game playmaking. You should actually have a decent amount of push with Ezra and Morgana in the bottom lane, so the bottom half of the map is already a strong side for Gambit, a bit of a shift from their last game. And now they just want to round things out with, I feel, a pretty safe blind pick top. Either the Cho'Gath or the Maokai could work if they want a little bit more engaged. Scion is the other option they hey, can go for. Look at you. It's almost like you're an analyst or something. There's the Scion figure for Gambit. Again, a really well-rounded comp. Looks very similar to what they just won with. And again, I think sticking to pretty standard stuff, especially for them. Looking to scale up into that mid-game and then take over from there. But what? is this last pick from Rainbow Show Seven. Gas, most likely. It's like the That's best a good pick one. <laughs> into the uh, Scion. I feel like that it already follows up on the engage that R7 have already built for themselves. And, oh, okay, no, instead, we will have the Swain up towards the top side. I was kind of expecting it to be in the mid. It does mean that there'll be very AP focus uh, with triple AP threat towards the top side of the map. Uh, that's what, uh, I'm pretty sure that Syndra will not be in the top lane. I can be fairly confident yeah. on that. <laughs> Um, that I also agree with. But into the Anivia, that's quite interesting. In the early levels, you will have a bit of pressure. And we'll see if Seiya, kind of the the god of Latin America North, the man that has been playing since 2013, is really the big superstar of that region. He is now being put onto a carry. 
the emphasis is going to be him, especially given how consistent and reliable he has been so far in the playing stage. Can he have the performance he needs to get into that tiebreaker game? It does feel like, especially in the mid jungle section of this game, there's a lot of potential volatility. Syndra, a decent oh, yeah. amount of pressure, especially when she hits six. And of course, Diamond Pucks on the Olaf, certainly taking the strong, more high tempo jungler early on into this one. So, again, a lot on the line for Worthy's team. I think Gambit doing the expected thing and kind of playing what they just did, a style that they're very refined with. I think R7 have defaulted somewhat to comfort here in this draft, but. I like the flex pick of the Swain. They've kind of thrown a, a wrench here, and they need that, and then maybe something else if they want to top this group. Because remember, even if they win, it will only force a tiebreak. So a lot for these teams to think about. Again, if there's a tiebreak, there will be a whole lot of prep in that during that last game. That certainly will be. We will still have uh, KLG versus Ascension after this. Both teams are out of contention, so that could be a pretty fun game to watch I'm, later on. I'm excited. I'm actually surprisingly excited for that one. <laughs> but we still have but, to get through yeah, this one, Page yes. 3. This is the decider. Will Gambit lock it in? Will they be the first team to qualify for the best of five? Or will they be forced into that tiebreaker? Can Rainbow Six get the 3-0 day? Well, we'll have to see. Tension kind of spreading out through Summoner's Rift. Mirroring the champions as they spread out here defensively at level one. And just as we did last game, let's take a look back at what happened the last time these two teams went up against each other because it was quite exciting, Pastry. We it was. saw the Nocturne Carthus combo. Lasers in the sky, all kinds of darkness, kind of a child's nightmare. <laughs> it, was a bit of, uh, it was Rainbow 7's nightmare as they kind of struggled to know how to deal with what they defined as cheese. Uh, and they were able to find a couple of early plays. They were able to mitigate some of the pressure. But in the mid-game, that's where things really spiked. It's a typical trend for Gambit. The 20-minute mark is where they really turn on around two items. They utilize that item spike well, uh, and they've been able to find it. But we've got to keep our eyes on this Morgana. She's hanging around the mid lane. Oh, what a binding from Edward. Kira also going to land the stun in. Still damage down. No ignite this time for Kira. But Edward, he's the one that has it. They're going to force the flash out of Sayer as Gentix looking to try and take the stun, but doesn't quite land it as Diamond and Stahels also invading towards this red buff. Now, this is a beautiful start for Gambit, because not only will they be able to get a steal on the enemy red buff, but Saya has been forced extremely low. Both of his health pots are already gone. And with the Ignite coming out from Morgana, it means that Kira, he has everything available to him. Once again, going for the spellbook. No Ignite this time around, though. Decided to go for the barrier instead. But having that early pressure against a Syndra is extremely valuable for the enemy. Yeah, curious to see where Odi goes. Probably expecting him to run straight to that red, but there is a ward that I think will time out right of Kira. But once for Odi, if he chooses to go there instead, he's just going to take his camp and I think accept the steal at this rate. Although we'll have to see as Diamond does look to be going towards that left-hand side, and Kira, no ward to reward just yet, but is at least maybe checking. Lodic, they're going to get jumped on Gettix and White Lotus. Getting nice and aggressive. Edward, level one, will get stunned. Binding, no going to land back in as Lodic now returns fire. And Rainbow Seven basically just getting the early level two. Kira checking out the red buff to see if Oddy was trying to get the steal. There will be a ward to spot him out. But due to the all in that happened down in the bottom lane from White Lotus and Gentix, they do actually have a decent amount of pressure, which would make it easier for Oddy to go for the invade. Instead, he's showing the respect. He's just going to go for the Scuttle Crab. He still has the choice to go for a steal, but it's very, very risky, especially with Diamond Pox already completing his walls and now heading towards the bottom side. No need to take the risk, so Oddy will play respectfully, but unfortunately for him, it looks like he is going to get three buffed by Diamond Pox, who also stole away those Raptors. Oddy will now walk back to Diamond. Very healthy, very good early farming pattern here for the Olaf. Oh, I did not notice that the first time. That is the feels bad, man. That is the ultimate feels bad, man. Gerard also struggling up towards the top side of the map. Uh, the thing about Swain is he did also receive a couple of nerfs across 8.7 and 8.8. .8. Uh, especially the big one was to his Q. The cooldown increased, the damage has been reduced, and his early push was weak before. It's a lot weaker now, especially against the Sion, who, even though Sion did have some nerfs himself, he's still really obnoxious in the laning phase. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you're just kind of seeing that as Gerald is constantly forced under his tower, but he's still doing pretty well in terms of the farm. And it's just kind of what you expect from uh, one of the longest standing players on this roster and also just kind of a veteran uh, of the Rainbow Seven squad. Yep, certainly has had a pretty good day for himself so far. We'll see how Draw continues that as these waves are just kind of pushing back and forth. Looks like Gambit have reversed theirs in bot side. 
And it now going to go for a recall based on Lloyd's blue pill. Diamond, though, again, continuing to clear up. Has the Predator and two jungle items ready. Looking for a lane gang, perhaps, here in top. You can see that Oddy is hanging around, but there's enough vision right now due to that melee minion that is spotting out the uh, back brush. Now it is in darkness. He should be able to sneak his way in. But Gerard, he's, he's a ranged top laner. He doesn't really need to overextend. He does have control over the river, but I feel like he's going to take this and just back or not, Gerard. Playing a little bit recklessly, perhaps goes way too far forward. Now Diamond springs the trap. First attack goes awry, but now the Vision of Empire is going to try and slow it all down. Like this, to burn the flash. Don't shoot over the fallen flash. Instantly goes in. They want first blood. They will get it. Diamond claims the kill. Oh, and Gerald, he overstepped his bounds in the top lane. He didn't find it suspicious. The Stasio stopped pushing. He didn't read the trend, and as a result, he gets baited into the trap. First blood goes down to Gambit. We'll watch the setup again. Diamond very patient here in this brush. And in this situation, uh, Gerald's just reading this like, oh, okay, I have vision control over the river. Uh, Stasius is clearly just respecting the possibility of an enemy jungler. But no, it was all a trap. He ended up getting baited in. The setup is easy enough. Uh, I believe double flashes. Yep. Probably unnecessary, but they end up getting the kill, and that's fundamentally what they wanted. Looked cool, though. So, style points perhaps given over, but the summoners do give them the kill. And again, Gamut continue. Maybe the best award so far in MSI. 100% first blood participation still. Diamond getting in amongst it every single game. First blood king of the play-ins so far. Diamond now heading towards the middle lane. But I feel like we have to draw our attention back down to the bottom. Yeah, again, Lodic all alone. It does burn the flashback, gets knocked up by Oddy, and that's death. White Lotus just takes him down. He just got obliterated. Good positioning there from Oddy to come in from the flank. Edward was off for a roam, which is something that he often does. Rainbow Seven going for the punish, and even with the flash, even with the dash, it was not enough. Saya tries to take away those Raptors. Good ward to spot Diamond retaking those, but the big one and the majority of the gold does go over to Diamond as Gentix does put a ward behind that Drake. Again, Olaf can get aggressive on the early direct if he wants. So I think just getting some vision and again, trying to track Diamond who has been aggressive, but Oddy to his credit with a great gank in the bot lane does get things going for I think I think the man we really need to see get going, White Lotus and his Tristana. He certainly will be a big part uh, of Rainbow Seven success if they want to get themselves a win. Remember, they do have a bit of a scaling composition, very much geared towards team fighting. That's why I was kind of surprised when they swapped the uh, Swain up towards the top lane because you can see like they had a lot of uh, area of effect damage. They had good scaling across mid and AD, and then just a tank in the top lane if it would have rounded things out. But with the Syndra, you're kind of setting up, especially with the um, Zac kind of, you mentioned it earlier, the potential to dive a lot in the middle lane. You have a lot of good CC setup and a decent amount of burst, but because of the early disadvantages that Oddy found himself in, losing his red buff and having a lot of his camps thrown away, and now another invade, he's falling really far behind. Really good control ward actually from Gambit. Diamond Fox knows he's got free reign walking into that jungle. Oddy, this is not your in. jungle anymore. Yeah, man. no Predator pop. Diamond Fox going in, he's got the red buff, but he just freshly stole pops the Ragnarok. But Oddy does get away, forced to burn the flash though. And this is the risk. We talked about it in Champion Select. His activity gets really low. Oh, that's a flash in. Again, bot lane going through. Edward used the Black Shield on himself, waiting for it to time out, but it doesn't quite time out in time. No kill this time for the dual lane of R7, but Gerald's getting low. Stelos might be ready with the ulti. Oh, and Diamond's here. This, oh, looks, yeah. this looks like bad times for Gerald. I don't know if he can get out of this situation. He has his ult. Not no anymore, flash. I don't think. Yeah, first Axe goes. Gonna pop the ult. Gonna get knocked up. And see you later, Diamond. Ooh. Nice route, but Diamond walks away. Oh, so much pressure coming up towards the top side of the map. Kira also made his way up there to make or oh, add insult to injury. While all this action is happening up towards the top side, we're seeing a lot of action geared towards the bot for Rainbow Seven. Lodic only level five, being forced away from his tower. And now Kira just avoiding that. But this should be first tower going in favor of Gambit. Diamond Prox really utilizing the early playmaking power that Olaf does have, especially over the jungle counterpart of Zack. Yep, first a bit of extra gold goes over. Diamond's been doing well, but as you mentioned, Vedius, we are looking at White Lotus here on the Tristana. We're gonna get things done. Have a look at those two ADs in just a second, as Oddy looks to kind of roam things down. As you can see, pretty interesting comparison between these two. Lodic has really impressed a lot, and White Lotus, maybe not on day one, but certainly now that the tournament's kicking on.
Yeah, we're looking at the uh, day three stats between the two, and even though Lodic struggled at the beginning of the day, he definitely had a much stronger performance as the day progressed. We're not going to have enough time to talk about the ADs because we already see more action happening around the red buff. Let's see how impactful these two ADs can be. Yeah, it looks like the commit actually is here. Oddy does get ignited by Edward. Oh, good steal for Syndra. Oh, Kira wants it. Gonna flash forward in. Wall off Oddy. Turn him into Bloblitz. And this should be a free pickup. Who's going to get it? Who wants the kill? I, I think Kira does. Kira, yeah, they're just gonna hand it over to the mid laner of Gamut. Rainbow Seven. They tried to get the steal. They were not fast enough. Unfortunately for them, Oddy loses his life. Still level five. Yet to claim a red buff in this game. Gambit are doing a fantastic job of just constantly shutting him down. Yeah, Diamond Prox the CS lead is starting to get a little out of control, even for a jungle matchup here. As Kira and Diamond again continue this invade pattern. Diamond, known famously in the very early days of his career for being such a good aggressive counter jungler and showcasing some of that history here. As this blue buff's going over to Kira as well. This Grump also forfeit. Diamond, complete control of this early game. Just look at the level difference between the two junglers. We don't have time. Look at the bot lane. It's gross. Power. It's three right now. Make it two as Oddy does ding six, but the tower is under threat. Top already went down thanks to Diamond's earlier pressure. Gambit is starting to really snowball this game out of control. This is literally just the difference in the junglers and the matchup. They took the top lane tower due to the amount of pressure that Diamond Prox was able to exert. They've now brought that pressure down towards the bot lane and they're going to secure another tower. Gambit with a nearly 4,000 gold lead, a 10 minutes into the game. Rainbow Seven have zero options. And Diamond just saying, you know what, they, you start the Rift Tower, but that is not yours either. Get away from my monsters as White Lotus gonna try and move this big wave in towards this turret and trade something back. But Diamond already here, Edge people gonna thin out the wave. Not sure the duel lane will be up in time, but they are going to try. You know, and we talked about the two AD carries, the matchup, how interesting it's gonna be. White Lotus, the veteran who's been competing for quite a while now, the last few international events, he has really been able to have those standout performances, but yet to really make it into the group stages of MSI and Worlds, versus the young uh, AD rookie of Lodic, joining Gamut Squad halfway through their split. You kind of have to kind of rely on White Lotus in this situation. Lodic, he can just kind of sit back, ride the wave. Everything is going well for him, even though he struggled during the late phase. Whereas White Lotus, all the pressure kind of falls on him to be the big carry. Rainbow Seven are going to have to find a way to stall this game out. And they have to be careful of that 20-minute Baron. Mm. We saw it last game. Gambit, they're likely going to do it again. <laughs> And Rainbow Seven have to have good control over that area, otherwise Gambit will snowball just like they did. Yeah, I mean, Diamond is continuing to grind out advantages for his team. Again, we kind of talk about Gambit being comfortable in these scaling spots toward the mid game, but this is an even more comfortable lead that you can try and sit on if you do need to slow the pace of the game down. But so far, that is uh, not a word that Diamond understands very well today, despite excellent English, I might add. Cardrake goes over to Gambit, they will collect the first one of this game. Just standing across the board right now checking out some of the items that have been completed. Nothing yet. Um, <laughs> the only major thing that has been finished uh, is... Mobility boots. Yeah, we've got a mobility boots on Edward. Not yeah. really surprised. That dude loves to run. We've also got a banner of command up in the top lane. A bit more important. Very, really... Very, really? Um, <laughs> really? It is very effective against AP uh, champions because you kind of need auto attacks to kill it. And there is a triple AP threat towards the top side of R7's comp. So it will be difficult to clear that one out. And you can already see some of the pressure being now exerted onto Seiya as that final added tower is all that left for Gamma to take down. And I think with Rift Tower still being available, R7 are tried it a couple of times to take it down, but I think again Gambit shifting now to the top side of the map. Kira's already started it actually, and that looks like a pretty easy move over to mid to claim that last outer turret of this game and Keep R7 from getting really anything other than the one kill they've collected. Will Rainbow Seven go for a fight? I feel like it's way too risky right now when Tristana doesn't even have an item completed and how far behind Odd he is. So they will just give it up. That mid tower now looking very, very pulp for the taking. It right is. For the taking. Looking a little too squishy, which is odd for a stone structure. <laughs> But it's like Diamond's gonna move over. Oh, here we go. How good he's drifting. Stay Hoss gonna try and get back down to the bot lane and save the wave. He's got DP, but he needs clean. to get back. And that is clean, Vettius. Yeah. This guy is a drift king. Stajo secures the farm in the bottom lane. Very important. Super important. He still has teleport, so should a fight kick off, he can't join the battle. Uh, but likely that he won't need it. 
because he can just push out this bottom wave. He then creates a bit of a window for himself. He can then walk up towards the middle lane. But it looks like that all the waves are just going to be pushed out. I imagine Gamut going to go back to base, maybe spend a bit of the gold they've picked up for themselves, and then look to take that mid tier one. They do have the uh, Rift Herald, and I feel like that becomes the next easiest objective for them to take. And again, considering the stakes here in this game for Gambit, given that a win here secures them that qualifying spot into the knockout stage for the play-ins. Very important that I think they just kind of do their due diligence, protect their towers for as long as they can, continue snowballing advantages, just push out your waves, play it safe, play it simple. Kind of the style of league that Gambit really has showcased so far in this tournament. I feel like when the games get scrappier, Gambit maybe look a little shaky, but in this kind of controlled game, they have certainly shone. Certainly seems to be the case. Gambit showing the evolution that they've made from last year where they went 0-4 in the world's playing stages, really uh, struggled and underperformed relative to so many expectations that were put upon them, compared to now, where they're now 4-1 in the group, only one more win will secure them that spot into the best of fives. And for Rainbow 7, it's just more tragedy. This is a team that typically tops their group. They always fell short in the best of fives, but now they have one last opportunity. And even if they win, they still have to win that tiebreaker game. And Right now, things are looking difficult for them. A 4,000 gold deficit at 15 minutes into the game is a huge deficit to come back from. And again, you can see Lodic is a potential brush cam being set up there by three members of Rainbow 7, but Lodic again, respecting that, playing back. Diamond still with that Rift Herald to use. Sayo will get a blue buff, which was uh, what happened the last time around, but Diamond using this opportunity to turn on the Rift Herald and make sure this turret goes down in mid. In fact, with that health, it's dead. I agree. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't that certain. I was like, oh, better just make sure that it happens. But yeah, the outer ring is failed now by Gambit as they take down the turret, showing such great controlled League of Legends so far this game. Yep. You know, we, we harp on about it. It just comes back to that jungle matchup. You know, we talked about it in the draft. I was like, ooh. Rainbow Seven, they're probably going to go for an early Olaf here. They banned Kha'Zix, they banned Trundle. Uh, the next best pick would be the Olaf. Instead, they go for the Zac and they leave the Olaf open. And Diamond Proc says, mm, yeah, I'll take that. I'm more than happy to. We've already got comfort picks for Lodic and Kira. Stagios can play whatever tank he wants in the top side. And we're more than happy to play around this, especially given how much we love the Baron and love early playmaking. So they found the advantages. And now Oddy, let's see if he can find his second successful play, because credit to him, he did have one gank onto Lodic in the bot, but outside of that, he hasn't really influenced the game in any other way. No, and it has been tough for Rainbow 7, given oh, for how sure. much total map pressure Gamba have put on, but Oddy, I mean, Zach can make a lot of plays with the bevy of CC available in his kit, but again, Gambit sweeping things out, being very safe and careful. We'll see if Lodic takes any sort of bait here in the top lane. How long will they sit there for? That's the question we always have to oh. ask, and Edward just says, I think you're in there, I'll find you. Good respect being shown from Gambit. Edward, that's experience kicking in, you know, your spidey sense is tingling. When you play a League of Legends for long enough, you just have this intuition. And for Edward, it certainly was there. So Rainbow Seven failed another opportunity. They're being pushed in top, they're being pushed in bots. Infernal Rig spawning soon, so you would imagine that Gambit are looking towards picking up that objective. And Rainbow Seven is just slowly losing more and more control over the map, and you're just kind of looking at options and it's difficult for them because they need Gambit to mess up. They need Gambit to overextend. Maybe Rainbow Seven can find a pick. Maybe if they can get to two or three items, then Rainbow Seven can look to force a play. But right now, with the amount of control that Gambit has over the map, it's just, it's all on Gambit to really throw away this game. I was going to say, given the style they've kind of presented in this game and the last game, I think that's very wishful thinking at right? this point for Gambit to mess up. So all the control right now back down to the right-hand side of the map as Infernal is spawning in five seconds. Kira's already tunneling the Glacial Storm with his blue buff just to ensure maximum uptime on the raid boss. Infernal Drake will be forfeited over and Rainbow Seven, like you said, continue to get ground away by Gambit. At some point, they'll pull the trigger on a big engage, but Gambit They've also shown they can be proactive when they know their items are ready. So it's not just enough to sit back and hope something happens because Gambit will dictate pace once the 20, 25 minute mark hits. And we are getting close that, to that, Betty. We certainly are, Pace 3. And just to illustrate uh, control, um, you'll notice the difference between when you're fighting for vision versus when you have it. Because Gambit have control over all of the entrances to Rainbow Seven's jungle. You can see two control wards in the top side of the map, and right now the bottom side has just been cleared out, but that's because Gambit literally just took everything from there, and Rainbow Seven are then moving back in. That means that 
every time Rainbow Seven want to move in to clear their vision, they first have to get control over their own jungle before they can even look to contest River. That means that playing around Baron becomes very, very difficult because one of the first steps whenever trying to fight for Baron is gain mid control and then gain River control. And if you can't even approach the river, then obviously gaining it becomes that much harder. <laughs> I was going to say, Edward walked in and finally found the two control wards who were sitting in those brushes to try and set up the play earlier. Kind of, again, think about on your point where Rainbow Seven are putting their vision. They're putting it in to try and find a pick and just get some gold. Kind of reeks of desperation at this point. It is such a tough situation in a game like this. You have to think Gamba are just playing slowly but with real confidence as they know that this is the game they need to just lock first and have no more questions be asked. Exactly that. And so the Baron will become the big priority for them. The next few steps you'll see from Yamit are Stagius will look to push out bot and rather than use his teleport, the window that he creates will be used to move towards the Baron. They'll then have a numbers advantage and initially they'll try and force Geralt to TP. They don't need to try and rush it down and potentially have it stolen away from them. And once they have the teleport advantage, then it becomes 100 times easier to play around this objective. At least that's the safe approach. This is Gambit. They might just look to rush it down. They might go for that 50-50. But right now you can see further vision being set up towards the enemy jungle, trying to deny Rainbow Seven as much control around that objective as possible. Stales is really strong in this 1v1, just thanks to Banner and the Abyssal Mask. I mean, the gold that Gambit have, 6,000 gold ahead giving them so many advantages here in this mid-game as they will look, as you said, towards that Baron. But Kira, again, just pushing the wave out, getting mid-priority, doing the simple things here, and getting what looks like complete dominance of vision on the left-hand side. That Baron is lit up yep. for Gambit. Very, very good. time to start a party. Very good Baron setup from them. Uh, right now, though, uh, Gambit's focus is stealing away the blue buff. Uh, I think this is fine because they shouldn't lose that much vision control around the Baron as a result. They still have good mid priority. They'd set up the wave up top, which means the White Lotus had to go and catch it. Um, for the next few steps, we should see Stagios uh, try to start moving with this team, trying to force that teleport out from Geral. White Lotus will get a bit of a push, but because the tower is still there, there's not a huge amount that they can gain. And Gamma instead, with the numbers advanced, they're just going to go for this mid tier two. Yep, force them back, take the tier two, widen. The hole in the middle of the map that Rainbow Seven have to traverse to contest for this Baron. White Lotus will stay for the trade, but Stales also, again, doing work wow. in the side lane with the banner. will take this turret, 1v1 versus Ural and his Swain. So make it two turrets. White Lotus might just keep going, saying, you know what, at least we're getting gold. He's doing his best to farm up. He should have the second item completed. Could go for the Static Shiv if he wants a bit of extra Ooh, Ooh the Ezreal ult will actually interrupt, and now he's stuck between a rock and a hard That place. was a beautiful cancel by Lodic, but I think he's found... Oh, they tried to cancel the Blast Cone for Edward, but Kira flashing forward, looking for the pick. They know it's in, if they can get it, the Flash is nice, the Buster Shot is in bad with the TP, plus the X is going to land, a White Lotus gets taken down by Diamond. Now the fight will break out, but it's a desperate 4v5 for Rainbow Seven. And now there's no Teleport on Geralt. Here comes the Unstoppable Force. Chaos moves in, good scoop away there by Zack using his Let's Bounce to kind of peel off the Scion, but again, still scattered across the rift for Rainbow Seven. Baron looking ripe for Gambit. Exactly, that Oddy is still alive. Level 11 to the level 12 of Diamond, but I feel like this Baron is the Rainbow's last hope of staying alive in this game. Well, Oddy is alive and moving to the area. Ural gets a bump and Edwin and Gambit immediately disengage. That single pick has delayed the Baron from Gambit. Edward. Putting himself in a situation that he should not have. Well, let's see, Gambit with a good collapse here. They use the ulti to interrupt the base from White Lotus. They have the numbers to get the collapse down onto him. He tries to get ahead of the curve by utilizing the blast cone. Big here is like, you know what? I have the flash wall. White Lotus actually saves his flash for a very long time. And that allows uh, Diamond to just catch up to the AD carry get the chase down, secure the kill, and now they're in a position to set up the flank. That is when they collapse onto all three members. And even though they don't find a couple of extra kills, they set up for the Baron. Well, the few mistakes Gambit have made this game. Edward's misposition will cost them here, as they likely would have started the Baron, given the situation they had. Instead, they're forced to pull away and reset for another time. But given the lead they have, 
probably okay in the situation. Yeah, uh, to be fair, it means that their 20 minute Baron now has to be taken at a more reasonable time <laughs> in the game, right? So I think that for Gambit, it's still fine. That slight misplay will hurt the fact that Edward doesn't have his flash, which means that if he gets caught out of position, he very likely dies, especially only having the redemption himself. Uh, but Gambit's still full control. They just have to reset. Uh, you can see a lot of control wards sitting in their inventory right now, and they'll likely just look to uh, reset up around the Baron area. And again, using those dual sweepers, moving things around, looking for Cloud Drake, I guess, just trying to scrape the rift completely of objectives for Rainbow Seven to try and take, or perhaps using it as a lure. We'll see if Rainbow Seven dares to dip down there. Although, given the Lanka draw from Stahos, I don't know how likely it is they'll get it. Again, Gambit, you just look at where Rainbow Seven are forced to sit. It is firmly behind the river. It certainly is. They, they can't approach. And yeah, oh man, Banner of Command versus AP. Really, really sucks. Swain is losing his 1v1 to the yep. Cannon Minion and friends. Bob the Bannon Minion. <laughs> just being a real pain in the Something. backside. Well, again, again, letting things happen. Stay us without TP is roamed over to the mid lane. And so yeah, maybe looking for a pick. Ludic, Insta Arcane Shift. Does not want to get picked off there. In fact, maybe a turn can happen. Uh -oh. Diamond Dip already charging in. Looking for it going, say a Banshee will fall off, the Redemption's there, the Ezreal is thrown in, all the Globals they have are going through, and Ragnarok is just too much for Sayer. Diamond Prox on a rampage, his fourth kill claimed. Sayer had Ghost, but he delayed it for so long. Realistically, it probably wasn't going to help him get out of that situation anyway, but Gambit find themselves another pick. Off the back of the control they have over the enemy jungle, you said that they can't go past the river. It feels like they can't even go past their tier two towers as Gambit secures another one. White Lotus is like saying, all right, I might as well trade. Getting the gold, taking down the... Oh, he didn't even get the mid outer. Oh no, now Stahel's going to hunt him down at least by time. Gambit trying to crack an inhibitor turret right now. Diamond, no pull back in, no ult, no flash, gotta be careful, great black shield from Edward. Gonna keep his long-time teammate safe. R7 just doing what they can to stall. Now White Lotus being collapsed upon again by Stagios. He's just being an irritation. A swatting fly hanging around White Lotus, just trying to keep him around, stop him from getting back to his team. The gold difference is extended to about 8,000 in Gambit's favor. And they're on track to securing that first place spot after what has been a pretty impressive run from Rainbow 7 today. 2-0, they had a tough match against KLG, but a pretty convincing one against Ascension. I'm sure optimism was pretty high from the Latin American North fans, but unfortunately Gambit have come in prepared. They got a lot of their comfort picks, and they are controlling this map very effectively. Certainly are, and again, we talk about the Baron Gambit. Do love the area, have played so well and controlled so far. Rainbow Seven, if there's going to be an opportunity, it will be around that objective. So we'll see if they can find a big fight with White Lotus, having three items with Oddy, able to get in and aggressive with his initiation. Plenty of CC on the top side of the map. Yeah, any Rainbow Seven fans that are out there, White Lotus is your carry to watch. He has to turn this game around, bring Rainbow Seven back from an 8,000 gold deficit. It will definitely be a challenge. But with the champion that he has, with the items that he has completed, he is the best hope that Rainbow Seven have of turning this game around. One pick, a little bit more stalling, could be all that they need. Well, Let's see if he can do it. Gonna run a little out of time though as Stehos is back with his TP, almost level 16, but with the banner ready for that next Bannon minion. We already saw that you're all really can't contest, and that turret is pretty low threatening the bot side inhibitor. So Rainbow Seven, they move in, they get their vision. Oddy, I think just hiding behind Fog of All, hoping for a pick, goes in, looks for Edward, but already the Black Shield there. Good slap together, Lodic insta shifts out of the way, but White Lotus, he smells bloody, wants to kill Edward, will flash out of the way. Oh, look at Sejos. Good run back around, Lodic gets low redemption, but the crit isn't quite enough. White Lotus probably the target, as Gentix in the front, is gonna get slapped down. Ragnarok there, procked in by Diamond, and there's Bloblitz in for Zach, but that's not enough for a full kill. You're all also, Channeling the ulti, they're trying to zone out White Lotus, but actually pretty well fought as Kira does get the pick in onto Adi Ural. Flashes forward, looks for the Nova, doesn't get it, but the stopwatch might keep him alive for a little while longer. Double knock up there for Silence, not going to get it as Edward claims credit on the killing blow. And Rainbow Seven, they try, they throw in two, but they're going to lose two and maybe more as Saya fought the flash out of the way. Gambit, though, still trying to with White Lotus, maybe able to get his way in there. He can smell the resets here with the rocket jump. Fishing for crits on Kira. 
Again, the Black Shields on point, and Rainbow Seven, they got so close. Oh, and now here comes the TP from Stajos. Close, never enough, though, in League of Legends. Gambit, they can smell the air. We'll get the first kill. White Lotus, we're going to get the reset, but he will go down. Lonic slays the long time AD. And now the flash forward, knockout by Stajos. Skendix is like, I am so sorry, buddy, but there is nothing I can do for you today. Stajos says it's okay. I can do it myself. He'll run, run away, slowing as he goes. And Gambit, they will. Will extend for the pick. No, instead they peel off. They're going to look left. Maybe for the objective. The map will reset, Vedius. What an extended fight. White Lotus tried so hard to turn that team fight in his team's favor. But Gambit's front line was just too strong. Stagios and Diamond surviving for so long. An inability to get onto the back line because of Kira's use of zone control was fantastic. They still had the tower to play around. If White Lotus could have just gotten one kill, one jump, one reset, maybe it could have swung in their favor, but Gambit still had control. The problem is, because they tried to go for the re-engage, they used their teleport, they used a lot of summoner spells, and they aren't actually able to set up for the Baron. So, Stagios comes in from the flank. White Lotus is the person you need to initially track because he forces Lodic out of the fight. Now, Gentix gets four super low, that's one tank down. Odie gets chunked out because he dives in without the support from his team. He now gets chunked out. And then you're looking here and you're thinking, Diamond, he's getting super low if they can just get the kill. But now White Lotus is zoned away because of the Anivia ulti and the wall. So Jeral goes in to try and get the cleanup. He can't do it. He gives away his life. And then the three versus five, there's very little the Rainbow Seven can do to turn it around. We talked a lot about the ADK matchup. Look at the damage they dished out in that long extended passage. But Gambit, they're just about 10,000 gold ahead. They went from one banner to two as Rainbow Seven know their side lanes are in trouble. Oddy is trying, trying to find an angle for this initiation. And White Lotus, you don't have flash, so you better play perfectly. Gambit have looked extremely strong this game. They took the early lead and they've maintained control. But a couple of these fights, a couple of overcommitments toward these picks have meant that the Baron has not gone in their favor. But now they've started it. They have full vision control. I think they're going to get this one for free. Ten minutes late on the Baron, but it looks like still it will ring true for Gambit. Need a bit more. Oddy's actually in here for a steal. Doesn't have his flash. I think he just used his slingshot. They need to zone him out. They get the rune. He's going to ult his way into the pit. Saying that unleashed on Edward. He is going to go down. Rainbow Seven might have found something here, but Lodic knows he can assassinate the jungler. Get them a White Lotus. Still around the backside, gonna try and get it done. Still the wall again from Kira is so good, and Baron does go to Gambit. Oddy dived into the pit to try and get the steal. Gambit immediately disengaged. Oddy was forced to use his smite early in order to just stay alive, but it does not pay out. Gambit secured the Baron. They end up trading one for one. Yes, they'll lose their mid tier one, but overall it was worth for Gambit. Well, the Banner minion in the bot side still doing that work. The turret's pretty low, but R7 looks like they will get back in time to make sure it is saved. Yep, the tower locks on, hits it down. And goodbye, my friend. Bob the Banner minion will be missed until he uh, reappears in a couple minutes. In fact, soon. So there's, again, two banners here for Gambit, knowing that they can push that triple AP topside all across the map. And now with Baron, good luck in the next seed, Rainbow Seven. You are going to need it. We've seen how good Kira is when it comes to sieging with Anivia. When you have these empowered minions and the amount of zone control that that glacial bird can provide, it becomes so difficult for Rainbow Seven to stall. They're going to have to find some big team fight to swing this back into their favor. It may be grim, but it is not game yet. Vetti has White Lotus. Four items now, count them. Building in towards that Phil Blue Tristana. Building up levels, getting range on Draw a Bead. He can do it if Rainbow Seven can find a miracle or two at this point. Look at Oddy. He's sitting off in the fog of war. He has to find that engage. But will the follow-up come through even if he does? Remember how much control Kira has. He can deny a lot of the follow-up as that tower very likely to fall. Yeah, this one already had a lot of prep work done. Lodic does eat a root there from the Swain, but again, still the power of Gambit will push them onto this inhibitor and they will get it down. Top wave already prepped, mid not looking bad as it moves in towards Rainbow Sevens, remaining few inhibitors, and again, Gambit will fall back to the Cloud Drake. They will play it safe. They do not want to throw this one away. It's more shout out to the fact that Diamond has gone above and beyond the Flame Horizon on Oddy. He has not let down on the pressure. Level 16. He actually what has is that gold lead? Gold. He is the gold lead for Gambit. That is unbelievable.
just showing you how to punish when you have a favorable matchup in the jungle. This is that jungle v jungle interaction that Riot wanted, and this is what can happen. <laughs> Again, also playing kind of support as well. Zeke's Convergence, Randuin's Locket connected to Kira right now. So he can empower his teammates as well. This siege is going to be brutal. Kira just fishing for a couple picks. Lodix tanks there, burns the arcane shift. Ooh, very nice from Seiya. Pulling that empowered minion away with her W. But there's another one. Uh, there's always another one. Oh, he goes in. That's a pick, maybe. Omelette's there. And Evian goes down. White Lotus. He's the man they need. As Oni pulls two back. This could be the fight for Rainbow Seven. As Diamond's going to try and get away. Ural flashes forward. Doesn't quite get him with an overball. Oni has his sights set on the enemy jungler. Diamond running away. No flashes here in the top side. And Diamond is just going to keep hoofing it. The Cloud Drakes, they're kicking in. Benny is triple cloud. He gets away. Wait, but is he away just yet? Look, the collapse is coming in for Rainbow Seven. Got to keep. Juking Diamond, no, finally shut down by Saya. Rainbow Seven, they find an angle. And got Gambit dropped the ball. Rainbow Seven find the engage they were looking for. Even against the Baron empowered Gambit, they are now grouped up as five. They secured themselves a tower. That 12,000 gold lead has shrunk to eight pastry time. Wow, let's have a look at how this all kicked off. So, initially the cannon goes down. Oddit sitting in fog of war. Kira, ready to set up all, but the stun from Seiya is all that they needed. Lodic immediately forced to fight, and Status, he's on the back line! He's already out of this fight, he's like, nope, I can't tank anything here if my carries are already done. Fantastic fight for Rainbow Seven and Gambit. They've now lost the Baron. The amount of control that they have had for the vast majority of this game is slowly starting to slip away as Rainbow Seven have not given up yet. And the zero damage in Ivia will have to change for the next team fight. Kira didn't have it in that last fight. It wouldn't have mattered because Saya sniped him with a sphere. But Death Cap is now completed for this Anivia, and Rainbow Seven still have an issue with those super minions in the bot lane. Elder Dragon also now something they'll have to think about. And of course, the second Baron that Gambo may well need to close out this game. Rainbow Seven, the hope has not died yet. No, it has not. White Lotus, we talked a lot about him being the big carry, but it was Seher that comes up clutch in the dire moment. He is one of the big heroes, one of the big stars for Latin America North. And the issue is, you know, you test resolve in these kind of moments videos. Despite the lead that Gambit still have, it is getting less and less relevant as the game kicks on. Very and true. Lodic, especially the rookie, can he fight the tension that Gambit must be feeling in this game that will claim them first place if they can win? And as a reminder, Rainbow Seven, if they win, it will still force a tiebreaker. They will still have to play another game which will take place immediately after KLG versus Ascension, which is our final regularly scheduled game of the day. But a Gambit win means they secure first place in the group and they will be going on to play either Evos or the Flash Wolves in the best of five uh, later on in the week. Gambit still up to the regular scheduled business here in mid lane, trying to make that seed a little bit better than last time. Again, banners ready. No seven, starting to just wave these things out. Between Tristana and Syndra, pretty simple for them to clear out the waves. And even White Lotus, I think, maybe visited a Panda Minion down there, or just took some farm because he's almost full build as well. Oddy yet to complete his second major item. He's got components of it, but not as tanky as I'm sure he would like to be. If he finds an engage like the last one, though, it doesn't it matter. It may not matter. <laughs> he definitely wants to keep doing that. You can see now the empowered cannon minion up towards the top lane. And just the rest of Gambit backing off for now. They have full control over the top side jungle. They want a base reset because they need to restock on their vision. Once they've got that, they know that the moment the Baron spawns, if Rainbow Seven clear it out, they will be in a better position to regain control and immediately rush that down. And what are the chances that Rainbow Seven could really find two engages in a row like that? Well, 20 seconds till the Baron's gonna probably let us find out soon. White Lotus playing a little too far forward, perhaps. Theos re reads this, goes for White Lotus, who does have the sums again. Both the jump out of the way, Binding's gonna miss. Oddy thinks about a channel, but doesn't quite grab it. Kira walls them off. Need to stay safe, Gambit again, not willing to overcommit as they find Oddy. But again, slapped together, nice black shield from Edward, but Rainbow Seven are fending them off so far. Bot Inhib has respawned as well. And the Baron is now live. This is getting tense. It's getting really <laughs> tense, but he is. There's a 7,000 gold lead in favor for Gambit, but it feels like it means little to nothing. With four items done, 
for both mid laners. The AD carry looks super strong on the side of Rainbow Seven, but that doesn't mean that Lodic is a slouch either. Just compare the relative scaling of Tristana in the late game versus an Ezreal. You kind of always have to give it towards the Triss. Geral also completing the Void Staff. He'll have a little bit more power in his punches. We'll see how things play out. Baron, ooh, you can see Audi taking a decent amount of damage. He will be chunked out a little bit by Kira and the squad. Sayo also fishing for stuns. Does get Edward that time. Black Shield somehow left him alive. But again, Gambit, no, they've set this map up well. They've got top lane prepped and ready. Someone has to go answer that. Ural will go, but he does still have the TP. Gambit may play it slow for the TP bait. Elder Dragon spawning now as well. Gambit could pick up either one of them. Look at the damage dealt this game from White Lotus. We talked about him being the big carry. Well, he has been stepping up along with Seiya. The picks that they found, the damage they've been dealing will be huge in the coming fights. Kira, good start. Oh my goodness, yep, force the flash. Kira knows no overcommit. Oddy's a good pick if he can get it. Blasco, no, gonna keep him safe. And that should be Elder Drake secured for Gambit. And you know what? Elder Dragon's really good at helping you Tifa and really, really good at helping you take Baron very quickly. Oh, yes, Gambit rushed is. straight to the area. Really good play there from Kira. He had control over that single corridor which meant that using the wall and using the stun, he was able to zone the opposition out. Stagios can he use his ulti to quickly rejoin his team. Rainbow Seven, I don't know if they can gamble this. Yep, Vision all down. Stagios even uses his ulti just to get to the Baron in time, and the Baron is going to go down. Gambit a few steps away from closing this game and clinching first in this group, moving on to the best of five, but it is not done yet. Everything is set up perfectly for Gambit to end the game. This has to be a huge Gambit throw in order for Rainbow Seven to find a comeback. But this lane into the game, death time is a long. One big team fight for Rainbow Seven could be enough for Rainbow Seven to just run it down mid and end the game. The question is, will they find the fight that they found before? Will Gambit drop the ball? I feel like they won't. I feel like this is where they ended. I feel like Gambit have played this game mostly extremely well. It's just about catering to that White Lotus wall. Well, you've done a great job of setting up quite possibly the most dramatic ending to this 2018 MSI plane. We'll have to see though. Because Gambit, again, maybe taking a little too long. You always, again, have to worry, are they playing too safe? I don't necessarily think so, but you have to think mentally the player's thinking, oh no. There's no way this can happen to us. Yeah, I think that's about a minute left on the Elder Drake. Uh, Gambit, they want to try and take advantage of that while they still can. Two minutes on the Baron, there should be more than enough time. Here they go. This is where it begins, Space 3. Hardy, though, in such a great spot, channeling away. Go. It's going to be a... It's going to be a disappointing one. Oh, great stun. They don't go in for White Lotus. They take the turret instead. Going to play it real slow here for Gambit. Look at the burn coming down onto White Lotus. Taking so much damage simply passively from the Elder Drake. Inhib will fall and Gamut making their moves through the rest of Rainbow Seven's base. They've Baron for so long as well. If they can just take these and let the supers charge in. Oh, Stayos again threatening. Pull the trigger on the ult just yet. I think they're gonna go tutorial style as well, Vedius. Just take all the inhibs and maximize your chances to close out this game. Yeah, Gamma are basically saying, you know what, we don't actually want to fight you guys at all. We're just going to let the minions win the game for us. And it is working out nicely. Lodic, though, ooh, gets thrown over the wall by the blast. Yeah, that was a little uh loose, potentially, but everything stays okay as well as mobility gets him out. And Gambit do not want to live up to their namesake this time around. They are playing as best odds they can, but Lodic has been caught. Slapped together, this could be bad news, Bears! Turret goes down though again, everyone's still alive. Redemption will reset the fight for Gambit, but they are down a couple cooldowns. Sayer again doing so much damage. Banshees protect him in the dark, finding an Oni! Not gonna pull Looking the trigger this it. time. But it, no one can follow up if he goes to that. That's the risk that he has to be careful of. Gold means little to nothing at this point for most of the carries. I'm sure Oddy would like a little bit more gold in experience though. Um, but now there are two pushing waves that Rainbow Seven have to deal with as well. Oh, the fact that the game isn't over yet, though, still means that that Rainbow Seven win condition is alive. Gambit fans must be feeling tense yeah. right now. <laughs> They've seen them lose these fights. This is a problem. You get ahead in the game, you feel so good, you build up this big snowball, and then the game goes on, you're like, why hasn't this game ended exactly. yet? And you start to have the doubt creep into your mind. And if this goes to a tiebreak, 
the mental's gonna have to get some you sort know, of hard reset video. It's like in those solo queue games where you're like, we had a 10k gold lead earlier on, but I know that one of my teammates is gonna get caught and this game is suddenly gonna flip on its head. The question is, will one of those Gambit members get caught out? Will that individual make the mistake that allows Rainbow Seven in? As Kira is still looking very good. Here we go. Lodic again. Oh no, the target stay off. Actually taking a little too much damage. Yeah. He may have got two, but Kira flashes out of the way and Ragnarok will keep Diamond safe. <laughs> this is the problem. Winions in the bot side of the map are going to pressure these Nexus turrets. Black Shield keeps coming up for Edward. They're just utilizing the minions to win them the game. Gambit want to avoid fights at all costs. A lot of summoner spells were used, but Jirol doing his best to wave clear on the bot side. Both big buffs have won off the Elder Dragon and Baron now dropped as Gambit want this third in here. That can be the bait that moves him in. White Lotus gets stunned. He doesn't quite go in. Oddy again getting chunked. That's not really where he can engage. Sayos again gets a double knock, but they're just going to take the in here. Gambit so close. They're going to attrition out Rainbow Seven. Not interested in sticking around, again, as close to 100% success rate as they can get for this game. Yep, my word, so tense for Gambit, but they walk away victorious. They lose no members, they only lose a couple of summoner spells. The flash being down for Kira could be huge. With the Black Shield still available for Edward, he's gonna have to keep an eye on his mid lane and make sure he does not get caught out of position. Now, Baron, I believe it's spawning in about three minutes' time. I'm also looking at Elder Dragon as well, which has received buffs in recent The past. second Elder is scary. It's real good for Gamba. And if, if uh, anyone's surprised, I doubt it. This is the longest game of MSI 2018 so far. Again, Gambit playing it slow, trusting their style, trusting their ability to just grind out this game and win, even in what could be a coin flip situation right down to the wire. And White Lotus, the damage numbers just keep going up for total damage dealt this game. Six, six item Trist does not mess around, Vinny. No, it does not. Say a no slouch either. Jural has struggled to have an impact in these games so far, but he's been relegated to wave clear duty for most of the game. 4-1-1 on one right now for the mid lane of Rainbow Seven. The only person who really needs the gold isn't getting it. Oddy, still level 16. He doesn't care at this point in the game. He's like, you know what, as long as my carries can do the job. Oh, even boots have been sold to White Lotus. Literally six items completed. Yep. I expected to see it. White Lotus knows well. No, not really going anywhere, but defending my base, so might as well sell them. That's true. If you don't have to go anywhere, why do you need walk? Genius. <laughs> it's genius. If they're all dead, it can't stop me anyway. <laughs> That's our seventh plan at this point. Just kill them all and run it down. But my goodness. They've been pushed to the brink. Two Nexus turrets, all they have left standing to defend themselves. Rainbow Seven. They want that tiebreaker against Gambit. Gambit want to secure their spot in the best of five. There is only two Nexus turrets that stand in Gambit's way of securing first place. Yep, two turrets and five very pesky players <laughs> still defending their home base. Oh, Minute Heap goes back up and like, all right, deal with that. Oh, nice wall, but Oddy maybe thinks again an opportunity. Slap there, but a huge amount of burst. Oddy in the ball, it's already White Lotus trying to get it done, but he can't quite find the target. You're all flashed into the back. A huge drive, the cook gets set up. Jirol trying to find it, but he can't quite grab it. Gets rooted in place. Gambit tried to out the fight beautifully, and the look on that man's face says it all. Kira stays alive. Diamond stays alive. All five members are up ready for the next fight as the Baron is available and Gambit still have control. The next fight will be Baron. The game will not end yet, but you can see that. Look at the coaching stuff watching with, I'm sure, very tight jaws. Watching this game hopefully end in their team's favor, but Rainbow Seven have shown such stoicism, such metal to push the game even to this point. Three seconds until the second Elder spawns. And if Gambit secure that second Elder, that has to be game. It does so much damage, it is so strong. Oddy, will he get there in time to try and go for the steal? I think the answer is probably no. Looks like it's theirs. In fact, they may be setting up a trap, trying to get a little bit of vision. It's so somewhat shallow right now. You're all TP up and it TP up when he spawns, which is now, and this might be taking too long for Gambit. Oh god, here we go. Look at Kira, the positioning. The slash is back up, exhaust is down. 
Has to go the long way around, though. Oh, the Dragon reset. You're always defending the one super lane left. Also remember that both inhibs have respawned for Rainbow Seven, so there's only one lane that Joel has to deal with, which he is capable of. That 50,000 health Elder is going down super slowly, and Rainbow Seven, they're fine just stalling things out. Yeah, but though they're taking it safely, they've got Kira to zone them out of the way. Here's the TP. Wall not quite long enough. Oh no, don't leave it out, don't 50-50. Elder Dragon now turning to the Rainbow Seven, dealing them some damage, and still no, will release again. <laughs> Gambit just don't want to take any risks. They really don't. The Elder Dragon has reset. White Lotus now chunking it down. Will Gambit try go for the engage? Only half leash though. They're gonna go for the 50-50 out of good thing. Kira somehow gets the Elder Dragon, and that should be game. Gambit goes straight in for the fight. White Lotus tries to find the angle, but they take down Sayer. Kira is gonna zone out White Lotus. A 4v5 for 55 seconds, and no! Gambit, they get the rest of the picks, and the celebration started early, and it is well earned! Kira, the MVP, secures the Elder Drake, secures the team fight win, and Gambit will finish first place in Group A. They will do it, they will take a gamble, they had to, to close out the game. Rainbow Seven have tried so hard, and there's White Lotus, maybe saying the game's not done yet, boys! Still losing the fight to the minion wave for a little while longer. Gambit is saying we've got plenty more minions to play with. They'll take down Nexus Star at number one. Statehouse will run interference onto White Lotus. And Gambit, they will finish first place in their group. <laughs> Elation and redemption for Gambit Esports. After what was a very rough 2017 year, going 0 and 4 in the playing stages of Worlds, to now finishing top of their group and having an opportunity to make it all the way to the group stages of MSI. They played six games here to finish first. They will play up to five more to see if they can make it through to the group stage, but they have had quite the performance, a dramatic ending quite but finally they ascend to that first place rewrite history in some ways on their previous international performances and you can see it on their faces Vedius. that is a very very hard earned celebration yeah. they just played it so after what was such a dominating early game to then stall out into a 50 minute game wow that was a nail by rainbow seven they fought hard they found some very solid picks White Lotus, he contributed so much, but they were just too far behind. They couldn't find the engages that they wanted, and they just couldn't find the comeback. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't understand why the game kind of went the way it did when push to the brink teams will always fight their hardest. But like you said, it was not enough this time for Rainbow Seven, and Gambit do grind their way to a win. I love that the end of that game was a 50-50 taken by Kira, whose Anivia looks stunning, and again, Worthy of the bands it received early in the tournament. That was one wonderful game to watch. Definitely a great way to round out Group A. We still have another game. We do! Game. Don't you dare say <laughs> we're done! <laughs> but it will secure the top spot, Rainbow Seven, after... I mean, to be fair, you got to remember that for White Lotus as well, he did come back off the back of four months of not playing competitively uh, and uh, then performing on an international stage. Their day one performances made things a lot difficult for them to be able to turn it around, but still finishing second in the group while admirable does not result in anything. Well, before we toss to an interview, we're going to have a look at the ASAP Predator replay. It is, of course, our final fight of this game. This Elder Dragon 50-50 nail by So let's have a look at Kira and what he does. His use of the walls in the river was spectacular. He tries to zone out the entire enemy team. This is when Rainbow Seven feel like they can commit. And then the burst from the Q and E Kira combined with... There wasn't even a smite. He didn't need it. Kira did all of the work. And once they found the Elder Dragon, that's when the fight started to snowball in their favor. The flash in with the secure to help round things out. Credit to you, Vedius. Hashtag Superior Analyst or whatever you guys use over here in EU. You were right. They took the second Elder and the game did in yeah, fact end. nailed it. <laughs> Had it unlock all along. Well, it's been such... A journey for Gambit, but again, not long left to prepare. I think two days yes. to prepare it's for their the next opponent. Pay. We don't know yet. We no, they, they don't know either. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the draw will happen at the end of tomorrow, I do believe. Well, so they will have to wait for a little while until they find out who their final opponents will be. Still work to do, but celebration certainly in order to hear how Gambit secured their spot in the play and knockouts. Let's send it over for an interview with their victorious support.
Thank you very much, Patty Cake. I am joined by the victorious Edward. I just got to ask, how does it feel? A crazy game. It felt like you guys were winning for a long time. It was a little back and forth. Now you have locked that spot. You are moving on. How does it feel? Uh, it feels pretty good, actually, to actually go into the next stage of the tournament. Uh, it was actually really back and forth game, but we felt we were in control the whole time, but it was really hard to finish the game because they didn't do a lot of mistakes and actually played really good on the our siege. So we're, we're happy, really happy. Was there any point in that game where you were nervous that it might turn against you? Because there were a few moments where Rainbow Seven were mounting some comebacks. Uh, I don't think we were nervous that we we're going to lose the game. Uh, we. We did actually one crucial mistake when uh, a bit overstepped on the siege, but we knew we had like four dragons. If we we always had control on, on the in the jungle, so if we get elder elder, we get after Baron and we keep pushing, keep pushing, and we we knew after second elder we finish the game most likely. Yeah, second elder definitely very strong. Close there for a second, thought it might go down for a jungle steal. Now we take a look back, Worlds 2017. We've heard it from your players, we've heard it from the broadcast as well. Really rough for the Gambit squad. This year, things looking so much better for you guys. Really, what has changed between then and now to allow you to dominate your group so confidently? I don't think we actually dominated the group so confidently. We had really sloppy games, uh, but also really good ones. Uh, what changed? We, we did uh, some changes in the rosters. Uh, we changed our mentality in team. Uh, we changed our a bit play style. We had, have a lot of more champions, a bit more open-minded. Uh, I think that's the main, main things we did. Yeah. Yeah, looking at it, uh, Lodic coming in, I think a lot of people weren't expecting nearly as much from him, rookie on this kind of stage, but it seems like he played fantastically. What does he bring to the team as a player? Uh, I think the, the biggest uh, uh, plus on him is that he, he's a player, he doesn't care about who, who he plays against. He's, uh, he, he's like Genja. So he, he doesn't care who he's playing against. So that's the best thing. Uh, that's why he's uh, such a good rookie. Yeah, and it looks like it very much worked out well for him on stage across this group. Now, looking ahead, of course, you're going to be going up against Evos Esports or alternatively the Flash Wolves. How do you feel about those guys' as potential competition? Uh, to be honest, I'm, I have no idea because we've focused on group only, our, our group. I hope we're not going to meet Flash Wolves because obviously they're the biggest region uh, compared to uh, Team Evos. Um, so we will see how it's going to go. All right, well, we'll find out when you do the draw at the end of the day tomorrow. For now, congrats again on topping your group, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Drake, Austin, Edward, and welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk Gambit Esports after 3-0 and zero on the first day and a couple of hurdles on day two. They close it out. They are number one in the group, and we will see them play a best of five to get to that MSI group stage against either Evos or the Flash Wolves from the LMS. Wonderful. Told you so, Raz. <laughs> I told you so, buddy. You doubted them the whole day. And Wait a second. Here we are. Wait a minute. There were a few <laughs> intervals. Where I had some faith. <laughs> the problem came at the end when Rainbow Seven showed us some good play. And also, I couldn't care less about what your predictions were. I want to put the spotlight on Gambit, and yes. I want to talk about how exactly they did it. And even though we saw a lot, I do want to turn the attention back to the very early game because you guys said that Diamond Splay very early and getting that first blood is what absolutely propelled Gambit in this game. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was about to say, he's done this multiple times this tournament so far. Being able to catch out Waves coming in, crashing in. Jiral had a position where he had a crashing wave, a cannon minion wave at that, where he recognized that he was going to push in far too much. So he hid in that bush and he was ready for the game. Yeah, absolutely. But this is something that uh, Gambit and, you know, Diamond for a very long time actually revolutionized. Like being able to position certain things on the map to be able to understand where he needs to be. And that's one of those plays that as soon as that wave wasn't going to crash against the turret, there's no way Jiral is going to recall before it is there because yes. otherwise he's going to be denied so much gold, so much experience. So he has to approach that wave. And the fact that Diamond was there that early just shows how good his map understanding is. And a couple of things there. Also, we have to remember uh, level one, we had uh, Syndra two summoners blown because support and the mid together. They went in on Seiya and made him blow those summoners. And on top of that, we had Stejos and Diamond invade and get that red buff, which allowed them also to get the control and go up top. So again, I say this because the preparation was on point, and that's what we praised Gambit for on day one. And I think this is also what gave them a great start today, and what bodes well for a best of five. Yeah, absolutely. And we said as the tournament progresses, we expect the level ones to get a little bit more risky. And I think we saw that in this game, going for a little bit of a cheesy pick. And Syndra into Anivia is already a hard enough matchup. Mm. You can't burst her out. It's very hard to win the 2v2 because of the Agnivia weird interaction there with the ultimate. So I think that did put Sayer behind. He caught up as the game progressed. If that's what's going to happen, if the 
the game goes for 50 odd minutes, but still from minute one, he was just set down. Yeah, I thought that the strategy involved along with the Zach made it so the counter play would be playing around that, maybe looking towards the bottom lane to get some pick potential. Or even if you go mid, then you can bring in support and you have enough damage. So that's what they wanted to do. But obviously falling behind versus the Nivea that early, you can't go for that anymore. So they had to stall out. Perfect. Uh, absolutely. I mean, in a perfect point, we're going to take a look at some more diamond highlights because that was really the issue. Once Gambit got going, they kept going. Adi never recovered. He was the slowest in getting to level six of the entire MSI performance. And he probably felt quite useless. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw Gerald there fall down. He also had to play off his turret twice just because of the implied pressure that Diamond had all over the map. And then when you get this far ahead as Olaf, you don't really fall off anymore, Raz. When you got six items, you still go with everyone else. Yeah, he just keeps going for it. And here's my worry when it comes to Rainbow Seven at this stage of the game. If the Swain is not going to stay in the lane because he's getting cons consistently pressured out, and even along with Zach, you can't 2v2 that, you have to swap early. Their bottom lane was doing incredibly well, and suddenly you just have to swap out the dual lane, push out, head top, save your Swain, because they were putting them in a really poor position. Yeah, absolutely, but at the same time, Gambit had that read, and they had the ability to pick up double banner of command very early into it. They knew they were going up against two mages. They really did just set up every little piece of the puzzle to be able to reap the rewards of that, and I think that even when the game progressed to a point where, you know, White Lotus was absolutely massive, and never really really was played on Gambit's side of the map. It was always mm -hmm. them pushing into Rainbow Seven's map, which meant that even if they made mistakes, it wasn't enough to really allow Rainbow Seven to get back into yeah, the game. Yeah, it went very long, and then when you have it, Tristana, and you know that a Syndra can, can zero people down, there is a chance, but Gambit just had complete control, and we have to call out that man in the mid lane who we looked at day one. Kira wasn't maybe making the hugest plays on day one, but here his Anivia twice in a row does amazing things for Gambit. Yeah, you go long enough in a tournament and it seems like he's going to finally get it for himself. So you got to see Gambit go back to their late game style, or at least a style that's comfortable for Kira. So a lot of it was he got in the early game advantage for himself. And then as you saw later on in the game, when it came down to the final plays, the massive wall that he was able to make and change the state of the fights were crucial. We're going to go uh, to a break in just a second. The only thing I want to know from you guys, even though we can talk about it at the end of the show as well, is what do you think of Gambit's chances in this best of five versus Evos or versus the Flash Wolves? And who do you think they'd want to avoid? I think they definitely want to draw Ev Evos. Like, uh, when you have a look at Flash Wolves, they're a team that have showed up internationally, obviously a completely different lineup yeah. with Casa going over to the LPL. Uh, however, that's still a team that has got that history behind them. I think they would want to draw the Vietnamese region. Uh, and in saying that, I think they have a pretty good shot at being able to take them down if they do. I agree. Holistically, I think that if they do go up against Flash Wolves, though, it should go down to four or five games that they will be competitive. Wow, I mean, uh, that is a big praise for Gambit, and I really hope it becomes a competitive best of five. Congratulations to them for getting that number one spot. And now we're going to take a break, but when we return, Ascension Gaming and Chaos Latin Gamers have a chance to end their MSI run in style with a win in Game 6. Meet us back here after the break.